reach, I can never return And if I back down now, then forever I burn This is the point from which I can never retreat Cause if I turn back now, there can never be peace This is the point from which I will die, succeed, live in the struggle I know I'm alive when I bleed from now on It can never be the same as before Cause the place that I'm from doesn't exist anymore This is the point of no return, nigga, you better believe this Mary Magdalene well, Welcome back, guys Children of Jesus, the ever Sunday, July 10th, 2011, and today I'm talking with my good friend Steve Stars about the HIV AIDS fraud. And Steve, before we went to break, we were discussing how the medications themselves are actually worse and do more damage to your body than, you know, the quote-unquote virus would actually do. So my question to you is, is this being – I mean obviously if it's, if it's being covered up and lied about, it's not just to cover somebody's butt because you know if it was one or two people, the higher-ups, whoever, the board members of whatever controlling corporations that they work for would throw them under the bus and we all know this. So the question remains why this fraud for so long and not only why but <clears> – <throat> I mean the, the – that question itself is is kind of uh, broad. I, I guess a better, more targeted question would be: Do you think this is part of the whole eugenics depopulation agenda? I do. I actually do. I think it. Well, you know, I hate to say it, but uh, you know, where we've talked about so many times before, Popeye, where does this come from? You know, it, well, obviously, it's the medical industrial complex, but that's been so subverted, perverted over the years. And, you know, we could get into uh, some elaborate talk about Robert Gallo and Anthony Fauci, both of whom are members of the Sword of Loyola. Here we go again. You know, now you find the same people, Jesuits, involved in creating this thing. If you don't believe that, you go to Frontline. I've got the, I've got the site right here. Uh, I'll pull it up real quick here. There was a program that they did with Catholic DITS, Human Secretary, uh, uh, Human Health and Services Secretary, Margaret Heckler, where she talks about, you know, you can read her quotes there. You just go to Frontline Margaret Heckler. She talks about how Gallo and Fauci, you know, just led her through the process just like a deer-eyed idiot. You know, she, uh, she went all along with this whole thing and put this entire mess in place while she was uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services back in 1984. That was her voice you heard on the first part of the program at that health conference. So, you know, this is, this is something that was designed, I think, in particular to target uh, specific populations. Eventually, it, it became very effective in uh, African eugenics. Now, the, the neat thing about HIV, if, if you like neat, the word neat, uh, is that you can find any group of people determined by the Bangui definition that these people are AIDS patients, start, start them on pharmaceuticals, eliminate or change or alter the DNA in these people, make them very, very sick in already poor and dilapidated situations, as you know, eliminate certain groups because they're all AIDS patients. But you know, the nice thing about this, Popeye, is you don't have to worry about the actual disease agent ever affecting you or the people that are on the ground because a damn thing doesn't do anything. You know, it's all imaginary. It, you can put, I could create a disease called falling off the ladder disease. And I could, you know, yeah. It, it, <laughs> no, it, it, I know what you mean. <laughs> it's, it, it's caused by HIV. You know, It's I like say, the well, Federal Reserve calling themselves federal. They're not exactly. really a federal agency, you know. It's the same uh, people. Yeah, exactly. it is. It, yeah, and that's exactly where it's coming from. Uh, I mean, both Gallo and Fauci, members of the Sword of Loyola, both of them, you know, uh, very prominent in this the same cartel of people who have gotten into this. Can you time. say Jesuits? Jesuits. I, I, mm -hmm. I know you can. Yeah, I know you. Why can. are they always attached to everything? Why, you know, why, why have they always got their fingers involved in everything? I know. I'm just. That's a rhetorical question, Steve. But. Well, no, it is for us, uh, but for the listeners out there, you know, the whole point is, is you, you keep trying to avoid, you keep looking for something that's gone wrong that's not attached to them, and you can't find it anywhere. Why is that, you know? And this is something, well, when we talk about the C word, conspiracy, this was something I was even reluctant to put in my Steve, video. Steve, did you just say conspiracy? I just did. Shh. Shh, the Gestapo yeah. police might hear you and turn us in for saying the C word. Shh. Yeah, the C word. You know, and it's kind of funny because anybody who studies history will have to say that there, if there's ever been a conspiratorial group, 
you know, through history, it, it, they were already well documented as conspirators in, in 1773 when Pope Clement the Fourteenth banned them. You know, I mean, they were known all, all over Europe as conspirators. And, of course, when you talk to people today, they don't know a lick about history, which is really sad when, when it comes to this. Because, I mean, most of these people, you know, you couldn't even ring a bell with their, with their brains. They're not hard enough and, and solid enough there to do it. But I'll tell you, the, the, the key thing here is that uh, what we have seen, and you can actually go online and there's a, a website that Janine Baker's put together where you can see the handwritten notes of Robert Gallo, evidence of fraud. It's called, uh, the, the website is called uh, fearoftheinvisible.com fearoftheinvisible.com, and all you have to do is just Google HIV fraud, and it comes up there. And you can actually see the PDF of the handwritten notes, and it says evidence of fraud, question mark. You know, and you can read down, and you can see the entire thing, the way it all came together here. Science Magazine published, or let's put it this way, the, the, the Health and Human Services press conference pop i took place a week before the the actual test studies were 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 published for scientific peer review now of course you're always going to get a few people who will be yes but no sign on you know that's not peer review peer review is when you put something out in a scientific magazine in a publication and other scientists can look at it and say hmm let's look at their evidence and see what we have here they're, they're advancing the hypothesis the whole idea that hiv is the cause of aids has never been proven it's always been a hypothesis. As a matter of fact, it's been disproven by the evidence uh, gathered by the Centers for Disease Control for now, gee, almost but 26, 27 years almost going on. So, I mean, it's, it's well documented that it is a fraud. But, I mean, everything happened here. Now, the, the key thing, a lot of people may realize this, if you saw the movie The Band Played On, you know, Randy Schultz's book that was made into a movie, about how Robert Gallo actually took uh, samples of uh, things that were sent to him and constructed the AIDS virus from Luc Montagnier's studies that were done in the Pasteur Institute in France. So six months after, or six, to month, six months, nine months after the, uh, the announcement on April 23rd, 1984, the French raised hell. They said, hey, that's our stuff. Gallo just pirated our information here. Not only that, he misapplied it and everything like that. He dragged Luc Montagnier in. And Dr. Luc Montagnier got the Nobel Prize. Now, you know what's funny about it? They didn't even mention Gallo. And he's supposed to be the co-discoverer of HIV AIDS. The co-discoverer wasn't given the Nobel Prize. But they gave it to Luc Montagnier. And if you watch the film House of Numbers, you can see that Luc Montagnier even talks about how people with normal immune systems will, will rarely develop AIDS with an HIV infection. What does that tell you? You know, I mean, he said as early as 1990 that HIV might be benign. In 1990, at the, at the uh, San Francisco AIDS conference, Luc Montagnier said HIV may not be the cause of AIDS. Here's the code. I would be remiss not to bring this up, Steve, but I have to ask you this because I know I talked to you about this off air. And before I forget, I have to ask you this. And then I'll let you pick up right where you were going. But a lot of people are going to say, hey, remember when Bear got caught shipping uh, that the AIDS tainted, um, or I'm doing air quotes, the AIDS tainted, um, medicine for the hemophiliacs. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not sure if it was just blood or if it was blood mixed with medicine for the hemophiliacs or whatever, but it, we, it got shipped over to Europe and everybody was like, you know, uh, a lot of, uh, people that, you know, all in the alternative media try to expose that and say, hey, look, you know, they did, how, if, if AIDS doesn't exist, then how did they taint that? I, I wanted you to touch on that really quick before I forgot. Explain to everybody the deal with that, what, how, you know, what you, yeah. what you told me. Well, there was a lot of old blood, and because they had to take so many samples from so many different people to, to create the clotting factor for hemophiliacs in the early days, now they've since come up with better treatments, and they've purified the, the purified uh, factor is no longer uh, a real problem for hemophiliacs. A lot of that old blood got stored, and then, of course, Bayer, which was related to IG, Farben, and some of the German pharmaceutical companies, uh, you know, had a tendency to uh, try to fudge a little bit on some of the, uh, the, the gathered materials that they had to create the clotting factor. And so as a result, a lot of old blood ended up in their supply and somebody caught it and said, wait a minute, this stuff wasn't filtered and it could have had the AIDS virus in it. But, you know, what my thinking is that they basically use that to reignite fear. And, of course, a lot of people, in the, even in the Patriot Truth Movement, in the alternative media said, oh, my God, oh, my God. You see, fear is the way this thing operates. It's identical to 9-11. 
you have to be afraid of the virus, which you can't see. You know, Osama bin Laden, who is hiding somewhere in a sleeper cell. Al-Qaeda, somebody who's out to get you. It's always a boogeyman. They keep this chase going on, and they reignite the fear. So a lot of people fell for that. And here's the funny thing about it. I'm not funny again, but ironic about it. You know, the hemophiliacs ex- increased their lifespan by 15 to 20 years with HIV and AIDS. That's not because HIV was good for them, Popeye. It's because the treatments in, in hemophilia increased to, the, to help these people survive a lot longer. Unfortunately, they now got a lot of foreign proteins and antibodies from a lot of people's different blood, and they developed what we call an antibody-positive status. And that's not healthy for them either. All right, guys, we're going to break. I'm going to have Steve pick up right where he left off when we come back, so stay tuned. By a jumbo jet It wasn't easy 